It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Nerve wracking. Right, do you want to count? Do you, should we start? Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Kieran Conn, and I'm joined here with the lovely Liz McCurry. Hello. So, in preparation for Global Games Jam 2019, we decided to do an internal Evangelism Games Jam to try and get those creative games design juices flowing. <laughs> we want to show you how to take a game from a concept all the way through the product and document the individual processes we took in order to create our game. So here in the Brighton office, we had two days to create a game. So Kieran and I got together and started brainstorming ideas of what to create. Yes, and we ended up with a game that we named Unfinished Business. The idea of the game is that you're a little ghost and you have to travel around the map and collect the items in order for you to rest peacefully. These items were to represent what you valued as important in life. And it was quite interesting how we came to that idea because it's just me and Kieran. Mm. Kieran is art, I am programming, and so we thought, the main character, how are we going to get around animating um, if we don't have an animator? Mm -hmm. So we were thinking, a ghost. A because ghost. <laughs> I've been banging on about how I wanted to get used to the new VFX graph. Mm -hmm. So we were kind of thinking with the idea of like a floaty, transparent, misty ghost that leaves a magical trail as you move. And this just seemed perfect for VFX graphs. Yeah, I think it was interesting because we didn't have an animator on our team. Um, so we wanted to kind of create, um, uh, use a way of making it look like it's animated um, without actually doing uh, rigging animation, which led us, like you said, to the, the visual effects graph. And the visual effects graph is available now from the package manager. You can download it and get started. Um, at the moment, it's used with HDRP. And if you'd like to find out more about VFX Graph, just check the links in the description for this video. Once we had established that we wanted to create a ghost oriented game, which was quite atmospheric, uh, we came up with some sketches and we came up with some concepts about how the map would be laid out, as well as what our ghost would hopefully look like. Yeah, so HDRP is our brand new high fidelity render pipeline. Um, and we saw an opportunity to create quite an interesting atmospheric game uh, with the new volumetrics in the high definition render pipeline. So this led to creating an interesting environment with not only lighting, but with fog, um, as well as creating interesting contrasting uh, assets um, in a uh, external DCC. So it came to asset creation, and I know that I wanted to go a low poly style because I wanted to create a whole load of assets without um, you know, thinking about uh, high poly details. And a lot of the details would come from the lighting disguised by the volumetric fog, um, and as well as some emissive textures that I would apply to our assets once they've been created. So once Kieran had done all the assets in 3ds Max and imported them into Unity and set up the lighting and the post-processing, it was really like easy to see that we'd nailed the art style and like the feel that we were going for. And mm. then it was just like little tweaks with like the volumetric settings and the lighting. And... So as we mentioned earlier, I'm no animator. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> but we wanted the character to be um, alive, mm -hmm. even though it's a ghost, mm -hmm. um, and just have a really visual impact on like our dark, airy level. Mm -hmm. So we decided that we use the visual effects graph. So the way that we did this was in um, a number of stages. Mm -hmm. So we luckily had Vlad, who is the graphics test engineer at the Brighton studio. <laughs> he like literally like sits across from me. So it's like, Vlad, how do I... <laughs> um, so what we did was, to get the ghost, the outline of the ghost, we used a point cache, mm -hmm. uh, which you can find the tool to create a point cache for your meshes in the utilities of the visual effects editor once you have it downloaded. Secondly, in the update, we set up a, a GPU event. So this meant that on every update, we would trigger the creation of a new set of particles that we would then use as the trail for the ghost. And then finally, with the particles that were spawned from that GPU event, we used a vector field, which um, kind of gives your particles an idea of what direction they need to flow in. Uh, we used that to get, get the cool flow of the trail of the ghost. So it was worked up in stages and it took a lot of iteration did, and yes. like discussion about how we wanted it to look. But in the end, we were pretty pleased with the result. Yeah, really, really happy. And the really cool thing is that I could create a ghost mesh in the DCC, so in 3ds Max, and then we could use um, the point cache to be able to generate that mesh in visual effects graph, um, which led to our pretty cool ghost. I'm really happy yeah. with him. We haven't come up with a name for him yet, though. It was Bernard. Um, was it Bernard? <laughs> well, it was Bernard. I remembered. <laughs> <laughs> so when Kieran uh, said that he wanted a third person kind of isometric view, yeah. 
we thought that Cinemachine would be a really simple way with the short time that we had in the game jam to be able to make a simple follow cam. Mm -hmm. So we just used virtual camera and we had the ghost as the follow target and the look at target. And that worked pretty much straight away <laughs> in getting that function functionality in there. Mm -hmm. So the asset that we used for sound was the Horror FX by Little Robot Sound Factory. Um, and the, ass or the assets that we used, the sound assets, um, were really, really good. It allowed us to create some um, eerie ambient sounds, um, but it also allowed us to, when you go over certain uh, decals, you have cracked bones, because <laughs> the asset was already in there. Um, so it saved us quite a lot of time when it came to sourcing sound assets, quite conveniently found on the asset store. And then for the menu and the UI for the collection of objects, we used Text Mesh Pro and just, um, yeah. Yeah, like, like, like usual, we created a separate scene. Um, I duplicated the scene, um, which we'd already made, because um, the menu was one of the last things that we'd done. Uh, duplicated the scene, and then we'd done a uh, menu on that, which would allow us to have kind of animated VFX coming from uh, the fountain that I created, yeah. from that island bit, um, which kind of gives the player or the user a bit of an insight into what the art style is like um, and uh, what the game will, will look like when they enter the game. So kind of thinking back to the jam and what we could have done better mm -hmm. or what went wrong, I really wanted to learn the visual effects graph and it was a great learning experience and the end output was fab but it meant that the rest of the game kind of suffered mechanically because as I said at the beginning of this video I'm a programmer but actually there wasn't much mechanics in the game um, because I was trying to get this visual effects right so my advice is that if you have a new feature that you're wanting to learn or a new skill that you're wanting to learn um, a game jam is a great place to learn that under pressure but if you want to take time to learn that and you're the only person on your team, like maybe you're the only programmer, maybe a game jam isn't the best place to do that. Yeah, like um, I think I was quite lucky because the high definition render pipeline I'd already covered before in many of my talks that I had done um, around EMEA or around Europe, Middle East and Africa. Um, for example, uh, if any of you want to know more information about how to get started um, with the high definition render pipeline from an artist's perspective, um, then do check out my blog post that I wrote called The High Definition Render Pipeline Getting Started Guide for Artists. Um, and it pretty much goes through everything that you need to know when it comes to materials, um, what the volume settings are, and it goes into great detail, and some of the things that you need to watch out for when using the High Definition Render Pipeline. So for any of you that are interested in playing our game Unfinished Business, do check it out on itch.io. We've uploaded it. Um, the link will be in the description. Um, please do let us know how you find it. Bear in mind it was made in two days. Um, we had a lot of fun doing it. Um, we, had we, had, <laughs> we had some scares. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had, um, you know, it was great to be able to work as a team with you, but it was also great to kind of look around and see Vlad, for example, who's just a few feet away from us and, and use the skills that he has um, as a via, uh, visual effects engineer. Yeah. Um, super, super useful, super, super helpful. And, and being able to get advice from um, our fellow evangelists, you know, um, being able to show them and get their opinions, what they think worked well, what didn't. Do let us know how you found the game um, and please do let us know in the comments below um, where you're going for Global Games Jam, whether you're participating. So where are you going for Global Games Jam? I'm going to be at Goldsmiths University in London. I'm really yes. looking forward to it. It's going to be great. And I'm in Dublin at Microsoft Studios. Um, so hopefully uh, we see some of you there, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching. Please do check out the other Evangelist videos where they created some awesome games. And for me and Kieran, have an awesome Global Game Jam 2019.